gameplay commentary. We're back at our house in Seven Days to Die. This is going to be part two of the Alpha 13 kind of walkthrough. Uh, as you can see, we're just back in our house, and I'm going to show you how crafting, cooking, and smelting works in this new Alpha 13 update. So the first thing that you wanted to look at is that uh, with the new graphical user interface and the new, well, just in her interface in general, it still works very similarly, similarly, excuse me, where you search for what you want. So if we wanted to make a, I don't know, we'll just do, I, I want to do something that's not here. Fire axe is not here. So let's say we want a fire axe. You can still just type fire and it'll give you anything with the word fire in it. Now, the way it works now is all of your interface up here. So if we want to craft arrows, we can click on that and we can raise, but it'll show what you need. One, one of each. So you need one stone, one wood, one feather. They got rid of sticks. Stone, like wood is now the only wood it's used for anything, which is helpful. You can see what you have. So the only thing I'm missing is feathers. And if you do have feathers, it'll let you raise that and craft it. One of my new favorite things is that you can craft uh, not just one thing. So if we just go back to our basics, we could camp, make ourselves a... Well, let me drop some of this crap that we don't need real quick. There we go. So let's say we want to make a few things. What we can do is instead of just waiting like in the old interface, we can make a chest, a door, and a campfire. And it'll actually queue up up to four different items. And, and that's in stack. So you can make eight chests, three doors, and five campfires, and still have an extra slot if you have something you want to make. So that's going to be sort of how the new crafting system works. It's very intuitive. I liked that. What got a little bit confusing was the cooking and smelting system for me. So if we go over here to our cooking system, now it works very similar to the crafting, but you have to have tools up here. Your fuel goes down here, but they added a turn on and turn off so that you can actually keep your fuel in here if you're not going to be leaving while cooking. If you leave while you cook, you want to make sure you take your fuel out because you won't be here to turn it off. But wh the way it works is, so for tallow, you'll see we have a cooking pot, so it says cooking pot required with a check mark. If you didn't have one on, you would not be able to make tallow as you do not have the cooking pot. Same thing, of course, goes for boiled water or things like that. By the way, they did add a boiled can of water that does not require a cooking pot for early games so that you can do that with your cans. But if you have that, your tool goes up here. They have you know your three standard tools. The lump of cool is, coal is what we're using for fuel. And you put in whatever you want to cook, such as tallow. You can queue that up for whatever you want. And you can hit your cook button. And let's say you want to be done. You can just hit turn off. That will stop pause wherever it's at and that's going to be how your new cooking system is working now the one that's really confusing in my opinion for the, if you're coming from one of the old alpha updates is the smelting with the smelting you're gonna get your hope oh, my guy's thirsty as shit that's okay we have a water glug, glug, glug. what you're gonna see so it'll give you warnings at the bottom left if you do get thirsty in the smelting, you now have three new tools, one being the wrench, one being the anvil, and one being calipers. Those are going to be, I haven't gotten to using the anvil and the calipers, those are for later end game usage. But what happens is, in this game, they now have input, or in this update, excuse me, they have input, up, output, fuel, and tools. Now what gets a little confusing is, instead of just melting it down and using molds, the clay and iron go into your input. So as you get lumps of clay, you actually drop them in the input, and then a lot of times iron or whatever you want to do, and then of course you add your fuel like you normally would. But what you do is, as you drop the input in here, it's stored as iron. So scrap iron turns into iron, clay turns in, or lumps of clay turn into clay. But these aren't what are used to craft. You actually craft with these units over here. So you may have to actually turn this on and you can see that these will start to go up. Uh, I guess I'm in the middle of crafting, so we'll just get rid of that. But as you can see, we've got our iron is going up to 485. This one up to 680, so on and so forth, like in the old ones. Now, as you get that done, you can make, of course, the forged iron, but you can see it doesn't use the scrap iron and lump of clay, even though that's what it looks like. It uses iron and clay. So if we have 485 of this and 680 clay, 
we can basically max out. We can make 48 of these because that we won't run out of uh, clay. We'll actually run out of iron. So molds are no longer a part of this game. You actually stack up clay and iron. That will allow you to uh, you get your scrap iron, get your lumps of clay, drop in the input, melt it down to regular iron and clay. And you can do this while you're forging. So if we were to say, let's just drop it down to a regular amount. I don't think that this types for us yet. Oh, no, it will. Okay, good. I thought it wasn't working for me last night. I don't know why. So now if we were to smelt this, we can actually smelt that, keep our fuel in, and uh, you can see that it will do this while still actually crafting this. So you can do both these at the same time. It is streamlined, but we're out of iron. It'll keep melting our clay, but it'll make us our forged iron. Let's turn that off. Take our forged iron. And that's going to be your new smelting system. Now, real quickly, what I'd like to cover for you. Uh, lastly, in the update currently that I really think would be important to show you guys is the new hot and cold system. In your B for Boy new character screen, you can see your core temp at all times. Uh, so let's put on, I have a hat that's like for winter hat. You can see also they added uh, overcoats so that you can stay warmer in the winter. I have a helmet. Where's my hat? Here we go. So let's put on our hat because this is actually a winter hat. You know, it's a wool cap. Uh, so with that, and we got all of our stuff on, you can see that our insulation is plus 31 degrees. So that means we can go 31 degrees colder than, you know, wherever and still be okay. Now what you want to watch out for is now you have heat sources and cold sources, of course. Cold and wet being snow and water. But... You also have to be careful because let's say we're just uh, we just have this running and we just have this running. Now, of course, this is dangerous with the heat system, but as our character is going to be inside around this heat with this new thing, uh, it may take a moment, but we're just gonna get right up on this campfire. You'll see in a moment that my character will start to overheat. Now, if you check your B, you can see it going quickly. We're 83 degrees core temp. Now we're going to be going up to 84. This core temp will continue to rise. I think that 85 might be where it starts to be dangerous, or maybe 90. Now this works conversely in the winter areas. If you're in the snow, you actually want to be in all of this heavy gear. So that's kind of its own different thing. If I had a coat on, it would be going quicker, but I don't have a coat on me, unfortunately. But yeah, you'll see that the core temple will start to go up. 85 will warn us. No? No 85? And vice versa. Or down here, you should be able to see that we are warmed by the fire. So our core temp has increased by 43%. So you you may need to build a fire if you're out in the you know out in the world having issues with that. It's a new thing that's gonna make the system much more difficult to work with. Because while you're doing all this, you're not just simply trying to fight zombies and keep yourself hydrated and working with food. You're going to actually need to keep yourself warm or cool. If you're in the desert, you need to wear light clothing. If you're in the winter areas, you want to wear heavy clothing. I wanted to get it up to 90 real quick just so you guys can see what it looks like if you run into that trouble. Bear with me a moment, but I would, while we're waiting for that, I would let you guys know that Alpha 13 is one of the best updates, if not the best update they have managed so far. Uh, they have a lot of benefits. They added a new ability to uh, upgrade the houses, which I'll do for you in the next part of the videos. But I wanted to get you these out first so that you know the most important things. So, all right, we're about to be, we're at 89 degrees. Once we get at about 89, 80 or whatever, I'll jump out and let you guys see what happens if you're not watching the temp go up so we got about halfway to go so if you're just sitting here cooking or hanging out at night you'll see down at the bottom left it's about to be like you are overheated you are oh there we go <laughs> you are overheated so it says you, your guy will kind of sigh it'll be 90 degrees now you got to be careful because if you keep staying by the fire you're gonna continue to go up Vice versa, one of the main things I can do is take off my wool cap. You, I'm still by the fire, but if I take off my wool cap and go away from the fire, our temperature will quickly drop back down to a not overheated state. So those, that, guys, is just something I wanted to show you. That's some of the big main changes in Alpha 13 between Part 1 we just watched, Part 2 that were right here. 
part three I can throw in I'll show you kind of some of the upgradings because now in this one upgrading can be done at any time on anything if you have the materials but thank you guys so much for watching leave a like leave a comment and in the next video I'll be bringing you guys some more alpha 13 updates and things that I can show you to make your lives easier Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Leave a like, leave a comment. Check out the live stream at twitch.tv slash nix underscore it. That is nix underscore it. Nix it. I will see you guys in the next video, and you have a good one.